Hi, I'm Jack Canfield, and welcome to today's podcast, where I'm honored and excited to have Marie Diamond joining me today. Now, Marie is a true luminary in the world of transformational leadership and a master in the art of feng shui, and she has taught more than 1 million students over the last 30 years and has spoken in more than 30 different countries. She's a founding member of the Global Transformational Leadership Council and is both the founder and president of the Association of Transformational Leaders of Europe. She's also a featured teacher in the movie The Secret, which if you haven't seen yet, I strongly encourage you to do so. And Marie's a business and a spiritual mentor to many top celebrities, corporate CEOs, successful entrepreneurs, and champion athletes. And just to give you a sense of how valued her work is, I'm going to give you just a list of some of her clients. They include A-list celebrities in the film and music industry, including Steven Spielberg, Jodie Foster, Dan Aykroyd, Paula Abdul. Top-selling writers and speakers, including Rhonda Byrne from The Secret, the late Bob Proctor, Dr. John Gray, Men Are From Mars, Marianne Williamson, who's currently running for president as we uh, record this, Vishen Lakiani from Mind Valley, and myself, of course. She's a world works with world cast athletes, championship-winning sports teams, leading CEOs, members of royal families around the globe. She's just really sought after because she's so good at what she does. And in the fall of 2022, she launched her own podcast called The Marie Diamond Show. And in the fall of 2023, she produced and starred in the major network TV show, Feng Shui Your Life. And as a best-selling author of nine books that I counted on Amazon last night, maybe there's more, her latest being Feng Shui Your Life, which offers a beginner's guide to transforming your living spaces to attract the life you've always dreamed of. Now, Marie's teachings resonate deeply with what we often discuss in our coaching programs that I do, that our environments play a pivotal role in our success, even more so than willpower alone. And so whether you're looking to attract financial success, improve your health, foster better relationships, or advance spirituality, I know that today's conversation is going to help you achieve what you want through the conscious and intentional design of your environment. Maria, I'm so excited to have you here to share your vision, your vision, your wisdom, and your guidance <laughs> with everyone. So thanks for joining, my dear. Thanks so much, Jack, for having me here on your show. I'm so excited. I'm excited too. I just I just remember all the times we spent together, you in my house, making corrections, so many things which we can talk about. But for our leaders who might be new to feng shui, could you briefly talk about the core principles of it and how they can just begin to incorporate that into their life? Of course. So feng shui is a Chinese energy system. And so you can compare a little bit with acupuncture. So acupuncture is really focusing on the body. And also, if you think about Tai Chi or Qigong, it all is about breath and movement. And so feng shui exactly means wind and water. So it's actually, again, breath and movement of water, but now not on the physical body, but your environment. So it's about 3,000 and a half years old. And this information was kept very much into the Asian culture till like the 1970s. And only then it started being uh, shared more in the uh, Western world. And, you know, I would say we all know a little bit about it because we all have spaces where we go and we're like, oh, I love it. It's such a good vibe. And then the other areas we're like, oh, I don't want to go back there. There's something off. We just don't know what it is, but it's actually we feel the energy. We feel the chi. And so one of the things, when I started studying feng shui, I was already very much focused on spirituality and meditation for many years, and also, of course, the mindset and the visualization. But what I understood from my grandmaster was that there were three parts to the law of attraction. And that one part is a more spiritual lock. So when we connect with the soul, with our purpose or mission in life. And the second part is more connect with what we can do with our human potential, with our talents, how which is our mindset, our actions we take, also our emotional behavior. But he also shared there was the last part, and that is the environment, not just the environment of the people where who you are with, but just really physically your environment where you live, where you sleep, where you work. And that that energy system was understood for thousands of years by the Chinese. 
And that's actually by using colors, your positioning of your desk, for example, what do you have around you? And so I started understanding that, you know, we are subconsciously affected all the time by the energy around us. So I call that like your three-dimensional vision board. So that literally we are connecting and attracting what is around us on the subconscious level, but we can consciously change it. And that is what the system of feng shui does. Yeah, I love it. You, you, well, I just, I'm remembering back to some of the things I came, the first time you came to my house, you were with, working with my wife all day and I walked in the living room and I went, what the hell just happened in here? You know, <laughs> things that were on the wall were replaced, couches were moved, you know, and it was like the part of me that's used to things the way they are was kind of freaked out. But then little by little, I realized it feels much better in this room. Everyone who walks into that room goes, oh, I love how the energy feels in here. Things started to happen more. I'm going to ask you a question. You, In the feng shui, one of the things that's talked about are corners. Like you said, this is your wealth corner. This is your relationships corner. Can you talk about that? And then I want to share a story about something you did with me yeah. that relates to that. But first, give us the overview of that, if you would. Yeah. So, of course, there are general principles in feng shui, but there also are principles, connections with you, your birthday specifically. So mm -hmm. I remember when I connect with you, I asked your birthday. And then based on your birthday, there are four wind directions, so energy directions that are very strong for you. There's one for success and money, one for your relationship, one for your wisdom, and one for your health. And so people can actually literally find that out by going to the free Mary Diamond app. And it's also explained in the book feng shui your life where then uh, they can actually find out what their directions are and it's very interesting i want to show you so this is like a compass and it indicates my directions so based on your birthday you will get like a different compass so for me it's interesting since i'm born my energy system is the strongest my wind of abundance, what we say, the portal to the universe is the strongest for the Southwest. So it's one of the reasons I actually moved to, you know, Santa Barbara, LA, you know, San Diego, that area, because like the Southwest of the country, literally. But it also means that in my space, that the Southwest is the strongest. So that's actually behind me. So I don't have to really look at it, but it's energetically present. So there are my awards, my books, my contracts, my financial statements. So everything is there. But also everybody has a relationship direction. And in my relationship direction is literally a globe. You know, and you will remind yourself about that tip, you know, because I'm global. But I, for many years, your, your picture and the picture of you and me is in my relationship direction because I'm still so honored of the breakthrough that you gave me by inviting me to the Transformation Leadership Council. So you have to think everything around you, you can place it like all over, but if you're focusing on getting it in the flow, in your personal chi, in your space, and I always focus on the places where you sleep, where you work, and where you live, because that's where you spend the most time, like three to five hours. You, you're not going to check your success direction in your bathroom because you don't spend time there as much. So, But it's very interesting. There's a personal chi, like an energy profile that you have since you're born, and we can figure that out. It's, a, it's not just numerology. It's not just adding numbers. It's, it's really a calculation. There's a mathematical, a mathematical formula behind it. And then once you have it and you can use your compass, you understand where what is where. And perhaps first you need to look what has been there for the moment, what has affected me. Perhaps there was clutter there or perhaps the wrong images. So everything that was there, based on the law of resonance, was resonating with you subconsciously or perhaps blocking yourself for the goals and the vision that you have for the future. Well, the, the story I want to tell actually is about a globe. And yeah. um, one of the things I had said is I wanted to do more international speaking. And you said, put a globe in the wealth corner and you showed me where it was. So I bought this little globe. If you ever go to Las Vegas, they have these globes sometimes that are made out of like semi-precious stones yeah. that make up the different countries, you know, blue and green. and So I put it there. And about four months later, my wife, I said, "Will you get that globe out of that effing corner. And I said, why? She said, you're never home. You go on these two week trips. You go into the Middle East and you go to du Dubai and Oman and Iran and Kuwait. And then you go to the East and you go to like uh, Malaysia and 
India and Thailand. So I, I hate it. I want you home more. <laughs> so I, it, I remember that she called me actually on this. She, <laughs> she, she called me and said, can we stop having this globe there? And I said, why? He said, it's never home any, anymore. <laughs> right? And I was like, well, it depends on what he wants, of course. Right? So I, I don't know the, the result, what you did with the globe, but... <laughs> <laughs> I think we did remove it for a while and it slowed down. I still do international work, but I think it doesn't. There were there were months when I was gone for two or three weeks out of the month and it wasn't the best thing for our relationship. Yeah. But I'm just saying it because I'm saying it works. That the, what yeah. you were what you asked me to do was incredibly successful in yeah. the process of that. Now you've written this book, Feng Shui Your Life. Uh yeah. talk about some of the more practical things that are in there that people could start to think about and implement today. And I, I want to encourage people to get your app. I was wanted to talk about that and also your book, but let's start with just the, some of the basics that you would love to of share course. with people. Yeah. So the book Feng Shui Your Life is literally a beginner's guide to using the law of attraction in your home. And so it's like having Marie Diamond with you hand by hand, you know, walking through your home to kind of see what is happening right now. What have you been attracting? Because, you know, one of the things I shared is like the law of attraction works also at your home and you create like your own um, energy field. And so to correct that, to make sure it's aligned with the goals that you have. And so for me, it was important to have a book that people like could, first of all, an easy read. It's not like a very difficult uh, technology or anything, but it's really good. Just brings you step by step through all the different places in your, in your space. Again, based on your birthday, but looking at what can I do in my bedroom? What can I do in my office? What can I do for my children? What can I do in, you know, for certain aspects of my life? If I want to improve my health or I want to improve my motivation. So we kind of focus on all different areas. And then we use literally the redesigning your space. But it doesn't mean that you have to suddenly, you know, um, paint everything. It's all about really um, with a small budget, literally using what you already have. Sometimes just using books literally could be helpful. If you want to activate your wisdom direction, you will put there books that inspire you. Or if you have books uh, that are to talk about, you know, relationships and romance, you can use books. So it's all about using, first of all, what you have to just redesign the space. And then of course, also using colors because colors have a vibrational field. And I use 24 colors that really uh, helps uh, people to activate the energy. And so we also can work with crystals. We can work with plants. So we work with all things that we have around us. So it doesn't have to become a, a Chinese temple. It is still your home, but it's just you, you reuse and you start understanding what every statue, what every item stands for. And we work also with the elements. So it's like some things are water, other things are metal, other things will use earth like crystals. By placing it in the right directions, it will harmonize the vibration of the space. And the, the first thing that people experience is like, oh, I want to stay more at home. I feel so good here, right? I feel like I can really relax here. And then you start seeing that there's the, all this attraction that starts happening. But in, before they can do that, sometimes they have to declutter though. And so we have a, a few chapters on decluttering and space clearing because a lot of times people are just have too much, you know, so they need to let go of a few things. And uh, I, I think everybody has um, sometimes a tendency to have or too many books or too much this, right? So we need to kind of create space because we need to create a void also so that the new energy can come in. I know for me, you know, you have this kind of power direction, you know, like what face direction should your desk be facing? And I had a desk that was built into the floor. I mean, it was literally built in and it was in a wrong direction. And uh, so I, here's my desk, but the door was here coming into my room. So I'm getting hit from the side. And a lot of people have their back to their door. So they're kind of like, I always think of the mafia. The mafia bosses always sat facing the door. So if someone came in, they could see them coming, you know, so all this yeah. energy that would be negative. But what happens, we built a wall there, which was a bookcase that stopped that flow of energy banging into me that way. And uh, that really helped. Talk about 
some of the things are in the wrong place. Like we had a picture in our bedroom, some women bathing. It was a Japanese painting. Yeah. And you said, there's only room for one woman in your bedroom. That's your wife. <laughs> but we yeah. moved it. But, but talk about those kind of things that maybe yeah. shouldn't be where they are. Yeah, so well, one of the first things is we want to be in a power position. And so it's like you're the queen, the king, the president in your own space. So think about the president of the United States, whoever that is. He's actually sitting in the Oval Room and he he or she, you never know in the future, will actually see the four doors that are coming into the space. So they're not sitting with their back to it. So I always say that's the first principle. Always sit as much as you can that you can see the people coming in. Because as you follow the people, you'll follow the flow of energy and use the door you know, make sure you see the door, you come yourself into the space, yeah, because you bring your opportunities with you. So if you're with your back to the door, you literally are saying to the universe, I'm not really interested in the gifts that you're bringing me, right? And mm. so if you're sitting against the wall, even as sitting against a window, it's the same principle, because you can say, well, I see all this view, I said, yeah, but people don't come through a window, and the people that come through the window, well, let's be honest, <laughs> you don't want these kinds of people, right? <laughs> so um, the whole point is that you're hitting a wall. Now, we have seen and we've done some um, encephalograms and we've seen a, really a change in the brain waves when people are sitting wow. Seeing the door, we see within a few seconds, it's like it starts going more and more into alpha brain waves. If we're with the back to the door, we see within a few seconds spiking up more and more the beta brain waves. And we have done that in muscle testing. So, you know, thousands of people shown that, you know, when they are seeing the door, they're opening themselves to a higher energy. And it's really interesting. It's almost like the energy shifts from your reptilian brain to your frontal cortex. Yeah. Because you like your third eye, your, your, your chakras are all open to people. And otherwise you're like turning yourself, you know, away from the good energy. So that's something we can pr practice everywhere, literally in our, our workspace, on the dining room table, when we go out and we meet people, you know, I always say get a boot so that everybody can see people coming in. They all can see the server coming in, right? To help them. So always position yourself like this and your energy will start shifting right away. Yeah, it's a simple thing, right? But then, of course, you need to really look at the images around you. And like in your case, that images of these beautiful women. But I always say, like, think about this subconsciously. You are giving yourself permission to whatever is around you. And so, or your subconscious doesn't really make a difference between the energy or the image you see and the image you feel within yourself. And so by seeing that every day, right? So you are actually giving yourself, oh, I'm interested in more women, right? Or perhaps your partner would say, oh, perhaps there are other women in his life. Like just the fear of things, right? It doesn't have to be really happening. It's just that energy is there. And I've seen sometimes people having the weirdest things around him. I remember this woman and she was like, I can't have any romance. It's like, I only have romance when I go on a cruise. So I come into her space and she has two nightstands, but the nightstands are actually statues of tigers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, you can't think about it, but really big. And I was like, they had like, like really gemstones in their eyes. So I was like, I, I thought I were real tigers. They were so intense. And I said, well, I, I guess you're just telling every man that comes in, you know, I'm very protected, you know, I'm very okay by being alone, right? You, it's a permission. And she said, it's so interesting. Sometimes I bring people into my bedroom and at the last min minute, the man choose to like, you know, let's stay friends. I said, yeah, but he can't compete with his two tigers, to be honest, right? They're too intense. So sometimes we have this amazing interior design ideas that we have or images that looks really good, but we have to think it's every time we are there, it does influence us on a subconscious level. And the question is then, is that what I want? Is this what I want to connect with? And if it's not, then go for that picture with you and your partner. Or if you don't have romance, look for an image that shows love and, and hearts and, you know, and definitely avoid any water images in the bedroom because water always drowns your energy. And I always say, perhaps you will have walking along the beach and thinking, well, that's very romantic, but sleeping on water is not very romantic. 
That's true. That's true. That's true. I know when you worked with us, we you had us change the direction of our bed. So yeah. our bed, because I know that you're supposed to be sleeping in a certain alignment with your energy. And talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So as we have the four good directions, right? So when you go to the app, right? So there are four directions that are good and four directions that are empty. So what I did calculating, you know, uh, your birthday and Inga's birthday, I looked at which is the direction that was the strongest for both of you together. And now you were actually sleeping the first, uh, you know, when I saw your bedroom, you were sleeping towards the direction that was creating more frustration for both of you, like lack of communication. And so I redesigned it. So when you sleep, you want to have the, the head, the crown chakra, pointed towards a direction that brings you good wind, that brings you good energy. Now, it's not always possible, but, you know, depending on the design, but in your space, we were able to turn it around so that you, both of you would be in a better communication with each other and be less frustrated about each other. So that was one thing we could do. We can also do that at your desk. You always, the first rule is to see the door in the desk. That's important in your workspace. And then to make sure that you're looking at your direction. So you literally will hold the compass that I have. Like right now, I'm facing my wisdom direction, what is perfect because when I do interviews, I'm teaching, right? I'm a teacher, I'm sharing my wisdom, yeah? Because that's the only position in this room that I can see the door, right? But if I would, for example, turn myself like this, I would face an empty spot and I would have a harder time to communicate or to like think about all the words I have to say because, and I feel that very, you know, real because I literally, if I'm in the wrong direction, I have a harder time to explain things in English because English is my third language. So it's not my native language. When I'm in a good direction, it feels like my brain is in alpha. I'm concentrated, I'm focused, I'm on. And so a lot of people experience that when they then face a good direction, and I know you're facing your a good direction for you, or if you're sleeping towards a, a wrong direction, people feel like there's less energy or they feel less motivated to even wake up in the morning. Another thing that, that, that you shared that I thought was valuable is the impact of, I can't even remember what you call them, but beams, like when you have these beams like that people mm -hmm. often have that are going across the room or on the ceiling. Yeah. And one of my sons was his legs were under one of those beams, and he was having all these amazing pains in his legs. And we did a correction for that, and that stopped happening. And yeah. talk about that for a moment. Well, what happens is that, you know, when we have beams, we're literally, it's like an axe, you know, that is like above us. And mm -hmm. so when it then goes and crosses a part of our body, and especially people that are quite sensitive, will feel it faster. That's where the area of their body will feel more inflammated, will have more infection. So if they, for example, have done issues by falling or whatever, that will be a harder time to um, to recuperate or to heal. But of course, it can also be a big beam that is like between two people when they're sleeping. So there's like a beam mm. in the middle, right? And then they will feel like there's like a break because like everything is not only physical, it's energetically. Everything has an aura field, yeah? And so our aura fields or not just our physical body, that we connect then with that energy field of the space around us and especially the beams. So we need to cover that or we need to move the bed away from it or we need to get like a canopy bed or something that it doesn't affect our physical body. You mentioned uh, earlier about alpha brain waves and all that kind of stuff. I know a lot of people, you know, Western mind, somewhat skeptical about feng shui and, and wondering, eh, is this a lot of woo-woo stuff, does it really work? Is there other scientific evidence or you know, I know there's all kinds of experiential things that you've done, clients you've had, you've made corrections, or movies started to do better. I know you've worked with a lot of, you know, studios in Hollywood and so forth. But other than experientially, is there a lot of scientific research beginning to happen to validate all this? Yeah, there is um, 
in the um, University of Beijing, they have been started to really look into that. And mm -hmm. one of the things they have seen is that, for example, when people have mirrors reflecting their bed, even if it's dark, you think, well, the mirrors don't see anything, but still energetically, it doubles the vibration. And so they have seen that if there are mirrors, that there's a, a higher spike on blood pressure, more white blood cells, that means more inflammation. And so we then they cover it, they had seen that the blood pressure goes easier down and or that the medicines are working better at that time, or even that the white blood cells uh, are lowered and they have more red blood cells, but it always means, you know, have more oxygen in the body. So they have seen things like this, but I always say, you know, something that exists for more than 3000 years and is just still being practiced and even more practiced than ever before, you know, that itself shows that it really is working. And also when you look at the the people that uh, with name and fame and companies are starting to practice this, they really have seen the, the results of that. I mean, one of the first uh, uh, areas where I practiced feng shui was actually for petrochemical industry. So I was also, I'm a lawyer from background, but I also am a safety manager. I studied safety on um, industry, industrial uh, areas. And so they sometimes were like, there's always an accident happening exactly there. And so like, why is that? And so they start looking for solutions. And so they brought me in to look at literally, you know, what is going on there. And there was sometimes the colors that were just really confusing the, the people on the side. Um, so we changed things around or even just the place where they would hang out, uh, the work people, we would change it with different images, different colors. And they started seeing that the accidents started uh, going down. So we have seen in many companies that by using that, that there's a, uh, after the feng shui is done, that there's less absenteeism um, for, you know, health issues. People love more coming to work. So it's like we see the numbers really change from accidents mm -hmm. and absenteeism um, from the workforce. Uh, so it's really interesting to look at that. Of course, you can still say, well, it's still kind of, you know, strange if I change your color or, but I, I always say like, I think inherent, we already know that because we do that literally when we feel suddenly, oh, it doesn't feel good in our in our home anymore, we repaint it or we hang something different or we bring an interior designer. But if you just would understand that there's a system behind it that you can actually practice and find out. And I always say, try it out. And we see very quick results. So what I always say, between nine days and nine weeks, people see the difference. So I say, well, change your desk and feel it after nine days or nine weeks. Like, what? how do is my life different? Do I have like more people calling me or like I'll get better reviews or, you know, all these opportunities come to me. I have to be honest, if I would not have done my feng shui all these years, I would still probably have stayed a, a Belgian lawyer instead of what I'm doing right now. Because I, by practicing feng shui, I became also world renowned for my, in my field. So I always say my own story is definitely, um, a confirmation that it works. So in the, in your new book, which I'm encouraging people to get, um, let's say they buy your book and they start to read about it and they start to make some corrections based on that. Is there enough in there to start to see some major contributions or do you feel like it's just an introduction? People need to go further. No, I think no, your app don't. really makes it, makes it a lot yeah. easier to apply all this stuff. Correct. So the book and the app work together, of course, so oh. that people can really start practicing. No, we we have seen so much results with it um, so that people, it's like almost like, of course, we can do more advanced feng shui, and that is something that you need a consulting for. But mm -hmm. I would say 50% of my consulting that I do for people is in the book. So that is quite a lot of information. And so that they will feel like, oh, Marie brings me, you know, to every step along the way. So, of course, there's 50% that is connected more with um specifically the home, uh, because feng shui also looks at the time feng shui. So that means we're looking at when uh, you moved into a space, 
oh, perhaps you have uh, redecorated the space. So that will give a, a different influence. The front door is a certain direction and that will influence the whole space and then give some really good energies and bad energies in the space. So there's also, when I do consulting, we work with dowsing. So that's another part. I look for the magnetic disturbances. Um, that is part of my other 50%. But, you know, if you have 50% of my work already, you will have a tremendous change already so uh, i don't want to let you go yet because we have some more time i'm not quite sure what to ask you to keep you talking because i love it but you tell us a cup you've told me a couple stories at times like people you worked with and you know studios in hollywood and companies in europe and individuals and tell us some of the things that you saw that you shifted or changed and as a result of that things got better i know you have a ton of those yeah so i think one of the stories i um what to share is like sometimes people are just not aware enough of what they have around them, right? So I remember this woman and she was very spiritual and she was into angels, right? And so when I, she was telling me like, I, I can't get a man, right? Like I meet a lot of wonderful men, but nobody is really, you know, choosing for me. And I said to her, well, let's count the angels that you have. She had a hundred angels, right, in her house. I'm like, that's a lot, right? All kinds of statues and small and big. And I said to her, you know, why don't you just keep 10 and give away 90? And so she had this big box with all these little statues and paintings and whatever. And I said, but I want you to look out for the last one that picked uh, the person that picks the last angel. And so she had, she goes into this club where she's like connected with. And there was a new man that came into the club and he chose the last one. And, you know, he became her angel. So they got married, had children, you know. <laughs> so I always think it's very interesting sometimes what happens, you know, when people have this change. But, you know, there's like another person and she was like an accountant, was working for 10 years. She was from London. And she said, like, for 10 years, I didn't get any raise, not any bonus, not any compliment even. She's like, I was just working nine to five. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I need that job. I'm not going to change it, right? She wasn't even looking for another job. She was really stuck. And so she was sitting with her desk against the wall. So she couldn't see the, the manager passing by, uh, you know, talking to other people. She was really in her own little world all the time with, you know, her computer. And I asked her, I said, I want you to change your desk around. Just turn it around. It's a simple thing, right? And I said, I just want you to declutter your desk, you know, make sure it's it's nice, put some flowering plants around you, like something lush and beautiful to look at because she was only looking at numbers the whole time, right? So she did that. And I also asked her to put some golden or gold looking items around her, like gold stands for abundance and, um, and being, um, you know, having good reputation. And so she did all the small little things, it was literally one day work, right? Not even that. And so she called me a few weeks later, she said, oh my God, Marie, the man started giving me compliments, like, oh, you did such a good job. This report was so good. And she said, like, a few months later, she got a bonus. And then six months later, she got offered another job by a total different company where she actually doubled her, her income. And she's like, it was like, I could not have seen it. It's like she was so in her own little world, hitting the financial wall, hitting the wall of concentration. And so just small little things. That just really, what did that cost her? Like changing her desk, that doesn't cost you anything, right? And just getting a little flowers from home and putting a few things and decluttering. So it's just that these simple things that uh, can work for people. And, and literally that opens up their mind, you know, because we all mm -hmm. have this, we want a great mindset, but it's possible your home is is giving you a wrong mindset, yeah? Uh, or a different mindset than what you really want. And it's so easy to change. So that's like some simple uh, stories. Mm -hmm. But I would say my, my own story, really, when I came to live in the United States in 2001, I, you know, everybody I'm sure that's listening to has a vision board. So I had a vision board made and I put like a little post-it note on my vision board and I wrote on it, I'm going to be in a movie seen by millions of people that will transform the world. I know it's not perfect English, but it was my English at that time. 
And so I got myself a fake Oscar statue and I put a label on it, Marie Diamond. And I thought like, oh, I need a, a couple of years. So I put on 2005. Now, the interesting thing was within a few weeks, um, I was teaching a class. The last student that came into that class was actually our dear friend, Marcy Shymoff. Right. And so Marcy came in to come to, and she was like, Oh my God, I need to have you come to do my house and I want to study with you. And so that was like, I did not know that, but only it's also Marcy that brought me in connection with you, Jack. Right. And then in the transformation leadership meeting in Aspen, that's where the secret was filmed. Right. And that was filmed in 2005. So that was like, you know, the, it doesn't always mean it's there in one moment, but it's like the, the flow had changed for me. Like I was on the right flow. And the second thing that started happening within a month, that was so fast, that um, I got my first Oscar-winning client, yeah, that wow. literally came to me. And I didn't even had thought about getting Oscar-winning clients, but it was like my first Oscar-winning client. And I was like, oh, my God, his Oscar is much more heavier than mine. <laughs> like mine is just a small fake one, right? And so that alone just, just changed everything. And because I practiced that, you know, and then one day, you know, I was already um, – connected with you and many other people. Um, I remember one day I woke up and I'm like, you know what? Why is it that I only have people that have one, one Oscar? So what if I would put two extra Oscars? Like people have won three Oscars, right? So I put that on on the Tuesday morning. I will never forget around 11 o'clock. And then the Thursday from that week, they called me like, well, there's a VIP client that really wants you to come in next week. And I was like, I want to have the name. No, we can't before you sign off, right? I'm like, okay, I'll come. And they, they told me some other details. I, I, I had confidence to go. And so the week after, I'm in the bedroom of Steven Spielberg and there he has three Oscars. And I'm thinking, oh my God, he has three Oscars. And I'm asking, like, when did you decide to call me? Oh, they said, well, Marie, we know about you for four years. We've been talking to friends. We want Marie Diamond in to do all our homes for four years. But it's only last week, Tuesday afternoon, that same <laughs> Tuesday that I changed the Oscars, that we made the decision to call you. Yeah. So that is for me, it's just so precise. You know, that's what I've seen over the years. The more precise you are, like when we ask something in the universe, we need to be precise, but you're, also your home has to be precise to support you with that. I, I love that story. Have you ever been in, in anyone's home or office who won an Oscar and you had to say your Oscar's in the wrong place? <laughs> Well, I actually had to do that with, with Spielberg, right? Because it was in his bedroom. And I said, well, you don't make Oscars in your bedroom. <laughs> you make <laughs> Oscars in your office. So I asked him to place it in a different, like in his private uh, office. And so to really put it in his success direction, because that's where you would put awards, for example, in your right. wealth and success direction. And so, um, but I had, I remember I came into very interesting Dan Aykroyd, you know, he, he comes out with a new movie on the Ghostbuster, right? right. Um, he, I, I was looking everywhere for, you know, if he had any awards or any images of the movies he had on and I couldn't find anything. And he was in a, a penthouse in New York. And then I go to the bathroom and it's a huge bathroom and, and all the bathroom, there are all these images of all the Ghostbusters and the Blues Brothers. Like, and I, and I said, how is your career going for the moment? And he's like, well, nobody calls me anymore. Like I made enough money, you know, like, and I said, would you like people to call you again? He said, yeah, of course. And said, let's get them out of your bathroom. I said, but I love watching when I go to the bathroom. I said, really? Come on. <laughs> right? That's the wrong action <laughs> right there in the bathroom. So we put them all when we, he walked in to the entrance, like all these movies. And so he told me that a few weeks later, people start calling him again to do jobs in the industry of uh, movies. So because he was hiding it and he was hiding himself in some way too. Yeah. Right? So by changing that, but it's sometimes so simple. Like I remember a company who was um, a big company in the, um, for CGI in uh, Hollywood. They, I came in and they had 
on the whole hallways and the entrance, they had all images of nudes, women that were nude. And I was, I was run by a woman, by the way. And I was like, how do you feel the men are respecting you? And she said, no, I always feel very vulnerable with them. I said, well, you know, you're telling all the time when you come in. I actually walked into that office and I thought I was in an escort service. That's what my thoughts were, right? And she said, no, we do SGI and, you know, we have all these big movies. I said, why don't you take all these movie posters and hang them in the hallway so that people, as they walk in, they're like, oh, we are doing business here. Yeah, we're not going to a certain uh, website or looking at things that are nothing to do with our uh, jobs. And she said it was so interesting, just that one little thing, it shifted her company and she had 10% more profit within a few months because everybody was focused on their job. They were not distracted anymore subconsciously from all the nudes that were around her. And I was like, you know, it's just sometimes so simple what is around you is affecting you nonstop. And even if you're not aware of it, so why don't you place the right things around you so that you get focused on what you want to accomplish in your life? Well, I know every time I go to Las Vegas, I can see some of the feng shui that happens in these big casinos. And I've actually talked to some people there saying, we'll never get any Chinese people to come in here and gamble if it's not feng shui correctly. And, um, and you know, the casinos are making a ton of money. So obviously they know it works. This whole world fascinates me to, to no end. And I love reading about it. I love hearing about it. I'm going to ask you one last question about an example. I think it was you who told me once that you were working with a company and their profits were going up and down, up and down, up and down. They were never very stable. And I think you told me about the fact that the accounting person was right next to some electrical thing that was like going on and off. And do you remember that? Yeah. So yes, we, it's not just like the images and the colors around us. It's sometimes also, you know, literally electromagnetic magnetic fields Mm -hmm. that are around us that are affecting us, you know, things are going on and off and it can be a filter that goes on and off. And you're like, you're not even aware of that. It really affects your energy. It affects your mood even. Right. So it's like the person that literally had to make decisions. Yeah. Was, you know, on and off all the time, right? Sometimes it was on, sometimes it was off. And that really affected everything. But it can be simple as I remember a CEO and he was always very prickly, very bad mood. And, you know, he made sometimes really decisions that everybody was very upset about. And he was like, I really want this to be changed. But he had this huge cactus, you know, like literally where like your uh, library is, like literally like behind, but huge, right? And I was like, you have to think, you know, there's all these little needles that are in there, right? And it's just like, where would you have a cactus? You would have it in a desert, right? So you wouldn't have it really, it's, it's nothing lush or growing or blossoming, right? And I said, why don't you put that away, like in some other corner, but put something more lush, something more when you come in, it's like you start being like a cactus, literally, right? So let's be <laughs> something that is flowering and happy. And so he changed that. And, you know, the, the people really start acting differently towards him. He felt different. He also felt he was much more healthy. Yeah. Because we see sometimes these little things do affect our well-being all the time. So there's just all these little steps and that's all in the Feng Shui Your Life book. Like, what can you do? Where do you then place these things, right? Where, what are the colors that are really good for, for you? Is that for your abundance? Or if that is for your relationship? So there's all different colors that really will work well for you. And it's really interesting because we're coming now in a new period. Uh, so we're coming in what we call the cycle of nine. And it actually just started uh, the 4th of February of this year. And for 20 years, it's all about passion and purpose. And so the last 20 years, it was all about wisdom and gathering information. So if you look at the last 20 years, we got like all our search uh, engines that we had. People all start having podcasts or publishing their books or people are so into gathering information. And now we're into that period of like, okay, now you have all this information. How are you going to impact the world? How are you going to share this? How are you going to make a difference in the world with everything you have gathered? You know, 
And of course, you and I, and you more than me, have been on that journey for a long time. But also to activate that, we need to place something red or purple, and purple is probably the stronger color for that coming 20 years, um, in the south. So if you feel like you're not using enough your passion, your purpose, Put, for example, a purple candle in the south of your office and lit a candle regularly, you know, with an intention, you know, just like, you know, I lit it. And we always say lit it at least nine minutes because we need to get to the nine going. The nine is the number of fire in feng shui. So by just putting that intention for like 10 minutes and then you can stop the candle, but it just keeps the energy going. So there's just small little things and like I said, acupuncture doesn't have to be a big candle, so a small, a small activation is enough. You know what's interesting? I, I love this. I wasn't aware of the, the, the cycle of nine thing. I see in the culture, if you will, in my own life, you know, you've, you've been in my office. I own 3,000 books that I've read and got more in the garage and so forth. And I'm finding myself not wanting to read as much. I'm finding myself being motivated by quotes that say, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive because what the world needs are people who've come alive. Passion yeah. tests are becoming important. Yeah. People are like, follow your joy, follow your bliss, all this stuff. It's like you can almost see the shift happening. It um, is. And even among young people and partly because of social media and cell phones and lack of, you know, do you read books? I tell people I'm an author. Oh, I don't read books. <laughs> Where do you get your information? Oh, I get it on my cell phone, you know, and it yeah. shortened attention span more about what I want to do that feels good, less about all this knowing stuff. Um, yeah. So I find that fascinating that, that, that there's this whole cycle occurring that I'm seeing and sensing, but I didn't put a name on it, I, but now I understand it more. Yeah. I so yeah, it. we have it's cycles cool. of every 20 years. So it's a, a full cycle is 180 years. So we're mm -hmm. ending our cycle. We're cutting to period nine. And then in 2044, we start a 180 year cycle. And it's very interesting when we look at the last 180 years, it started with industrial evolution, a revolution, right? So we started this new, so it will be interesting. The next one is called the spiritual revolution. So I know we're all trying to get aware and awake and conscious, but, you know, we're still a few ones compared with the billions that are not there yet. And so the next 180 years is really focused on um, a cycle of spiritual energy. So we're going the right direction. Well, definitely have to reincarnate and enjoy that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. Well, you have a website. Talk about that. Talk about your book one more time and also how people can get a hold of your app because I think I'm yep. I'm going to definitely get that and use it and cuz I love it and then, and you're going to come up and and refeng shui my home. I haven't seen you for a few years, so yeah. looking forward to that as well. But let other people know what how they can get yeah, of course. Yourself. Well, you know, for the app, they can go to any app store and they put in Marie Diamond and they will get the energy number. And so what happens when they go to the app, they will be asked to put in their birthday and their birth gender because it's connected with your energy profile at birth and your DNA at birth. And mm -hmm. so then you will get a, an energy number and your four directions. And there are several free videos and daily messages to give you every time a reminder of what you can do with feng shui. And so then, of course, I would encourage them to get the Feng Shui Your Life in the good bookstores and on Amazon and to go to marydiamond.com, uh, the website, and definitely try to connect also with Instagram because the Mary Diamond official Instagram, every three days we do amazing videos, tutorials that just gives you, again, little tips to move forward because, you know, I'm on a mission to really make sure that uh, feng shui becomes a mainstream uh, topic. And that's one of the reasons why we have uh, Feng Shui Your Life is actually airing in the next month on Tubi, um, the, the Fox platform. And so because I really want this to become mainstream and, um, and that's my big focus for the next 20 years. Oh, good. Well, thank you so just no, I love spending this time with you. I just I look forward to being with you in person soon. Thanks for joining us today, Marie. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jack. And it's you have been um, an amazing mentor and amazing presence in my life. Thank you for that. No, it goes both ways. And thanks to all of you for watching or listening today. And please make sure to tune in again next week when we'll be 
engaging in conversation with another transformational thought leader that can help you live a happier, healthier, more successful, more fulfilling life. Until then, please remember that everything around you is energy and it's either flowing or being blocked and feng shui can help you relate to it in a way that's going to make it work for you to allow you to experience the ultimate abundance and joy and happiness you want in life. <music>